Hey everybody, Haku here with this week's live reaction or read through or whatever you want to call it for uh, The Promised Neverland and we're going to be going through chapters 140, 141, and 142. Uh, after that there will be three more chapters and I'm not sure if we're on break this week or next week because Obon Festival is, Jump usually takes off for it, is like the around the 13th-ish which is around when the official jump comes out. So as far as scanlation goes, I guess we'll see on Friday uh, if this week is the break, if this week is the issue off, or if it's next week. Uh, but either way, that means that this video is going to have three chapters, the next video is going to have three chapters, the one after that is going to be, depending on how, um, depending on if the break is this week or next week, the next video is going to have one chapter, and then we'll be all caught up making videos as soon as things go out live. Um, or at least as soon afterward as possible. Same as I do with the other jump stuff like uh, like One Piece or um, Boku no Hero Academia. But either way, I thought it was really funny that my last video on this is the first video that I've had get demonetized in like years. And I was like, oh, I must have said... Uh, Nuck Foreman a little too much because, uh, yeah, screw that guy. He's terrible. Every time I'm like, I believe in him. I trust in him. I'm like, oh, of course Norman's going to be redeemable. He's, he's Norman. He's, he's going to be all right. And every time I get one credit hour closer to earning my diploma at Clown College. And I don't, I don't know. I don't think... I don't think he should be redeemed at this point. I don't think I can forgive him at this point. Uh, because at risk of repeating myself, it's like... not a, It's like... It's terrible to be willing to just kill off an entire race or species of people uh, because you think it's for the right reason. Even if it is to protect Ray and Emma. Like, screw this guy. I think Aisha's, or Aisha's story is a really good example of why kill all demons on sight is not a good policy. It's a policy that doesn't work at all. And even when I was, like, thinking that maybe he was making plays away from Vincent and Cicero, making his own plays, and uh, not telling Aish to kill uh, Sungju and Musica, put on the red nose, I am a clown, I am wrong again, Norman is still terrible. So, I don't know if he can be redeemed at this point. And one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is because I think now, I love the Don Gilda stuff, I absolutely love it, but I think we're going to transition back to the Emma and Ray stuff, probably, given the titles of the next three chapters. Um, and if we do transition back to that, we don't know what remaking the promise is necessarily going to mean uh, in action, but even if they do succeed, there's still no guarantee, in my opinion, that Norman's just not going to betray them and continue trying to kill the demons. So yeah, don't know if he's redeemable at this point, but either way, long intro aside, um, let's get into chapter 140. Uh, we got A Portrait of Bliss, The Promised Neverland, and I didn't notice when I was flipping through when I saw this first page last time in the last read-through video, um, when I saw it, I thought it was the five, like leaders of the five houses or whatever but um just clicking onto this now i'm now noticing that it isn't it's bayon's family we have the elder bayon that died there and then in the center is the sort of younger one who's become the new head of the family and we see some other family members too so we might get some bayon development actually if this is the frontispiece either way it's a cool looking portrait I actually really dig this. Chapter 140, I'm here, and you know I love development for Demon Society, so I would love getting stories behind the five houses and stuff. Okay, translator page, moving along. Uh, we have Bayonne Domain, okay. Yeah, we see a train there. Straight to the capital. Lady Bayonne, consort to the current lord. Okay, hello Lady Bayonne. This is interesting. I love this stuff. Mother, where are we going? To the royal capital. We're meeting with father. So, Bayonne was a grandpa. Everybody's gathering there. 
we see the Evelk domain, the Noom domain, and they have like this weird flying train looking thing. Uh, the Doza domain. And they're carrying him on a throne like they did with, um, what's his face, Luce. There will be a festival, and it's most important. Now we see the Pupo domain. At least I think Luce was from the Doza. He looks kind of similar to the way they look, with the uh, weird horns on the one guy's head. God, I'd love to learn so much more about them. And like, sort of what sort of species are more mixed in to what families and stuff. It's, it's just so cool. Royal Capital, November the 7th, three days before the Tafari. And when it comes to being forgiving of the demons, I think it would be one thing if demons were just eating humans because that's the way their society were, but they didn't really need to do it. Then it's like, okay, it's just the way their society is. They need to be taught better than that, that humans are people too. So even then, they're kind of redeemable. Um, but it isn't, it isn't like they're not not at fault because they are at fault they're doing it just on purpose because society tells them to then but this is a situation where the demons have to eat humans it's basically part of their needed nutrition so maybe not the leaders of the demons of course because of what they've done to musica's group uh and kind of what they've done to musica's group led to the whole farm issue with humans but at least the just normal demon citizens they don't really have any choice but to eat humans. But we got three days before the Tafari. Preparations for the ceremony are apace. Tributes from all domains are pouring in. And the relatives of, the fu er, of all five regent families have already reported their departure toward the capital. The special fare dedicated to insert name here himself is also coming along without issue. It's expected to be delivered tomorrow. Okay, so since it's not Emma Ray or Norman... I wonder who it's gonna is it gonna be Phil? I wonder who it's gonna be. That would be some plot twisty stuff. That would be some plot twisty stuff if it's Phil. But we'll see. Well done. Lord Doza, Lord Doza. You won't find him here, Lord Poopo. He's just running in. That scoundrel pushed their drudgery onto us and ran a er, ran away to laze about. Ah. Uh, oh goodness. Doza's ter er, tyrannical vulgarity truly makes me wretch. Her Majesty is much too lenient. Duke of Elk too. Then the likes of er, then the likes of Doza come and take adva er, come to take advantage of it. We must only endure it until Tafari, Lady Noom. Once he's back to his own domain, we'll be rid of him. I like that everybody can't stand him. Yet, if I am to speak frankly, I very much concur with your feelings. I would rather have Gilan in court. Oh, Bayonne being quite the controversial little man. Bayonne, that kind of opinion must not be said aloud, says um, Pupo. Going to take me forever to get the names down. I remember it well from my own infancy. That lord brimmed with integrity and elegance, and he truly cared for his subjects. Okay, so he remembers then. And we see uh, Lord Bayonne, the father, um, introducing him. And it almost seems like Gilan had a braid similar to Musica's. What a shame to see er, to see such a mind be condemned to the wild. And that must be what they think of him, chained up out there to turn wild. I still wonder, was that necessary? Oh, and now we see Gilan and his people. And they're marching toward the capital. Oh, and now we're jumping to the Hogyoku. We got um we got Emma and Ray with the Hogyoku. And for long time jump readers you will uh you'll probably get the reference from Bleach. This is a four dimensional hypercube and inside it a pitch black spherical opening. Don't tell me it's a a black hole, but that's small. Or is it a wormhole? In any case, it's a hole. It's bound to be connected to somewhere, but what an ominous feeling. And if it's a black hole, we'd be affected just by approaching it. The gravitational intensity of its highly compressed matter would be strong enough to alter the flow of time itself. A single second could be equivalent to hours or years outside the event horizon, which implies we'd have no hope to come back in time to deter the advance of Norman's army. 
What's more, such gravitational power would be strong enough to trap light itself. Could it be that insert name here's true form is our... However, and he cuts himself off from thinking. It'll be all right. This'll lead to insert name here. I know it, says Emma. Right. Yes, it's time to stop overthinking things. To leave behind my doubts, my fear. The only way now is forward. I have to believe it. Let's go. Yes, and they both reach toward it. Just wait a bit more, everyone, Norman. It's now. Oh, and upon touching it, he wakes up just on the floor. What? And he starts, like, jumping up and looking around. Ray? Where am I now? Where's Emma? And he sees Toma, Lonnie, and Anna. Anna, Toma, Lonnie, and too. I'm back to the hideout? Are you real? And he, <laughs> he grabs one of them. What? Tell me, when is it now? What day, month, year? And where's Emma? And he's running out. Oh, and he may have got sent back. He may have got sent back to the hideout, but Emma is here at the uh, event horizon. I guess the place she saw within the, within the dragon. Man, I love this panel of her. And we see a reflection in the water. Or not water, her reflection in the space. I'm here. I'm finally here. This is the place of night and day. Holy crap. And now we see the dragon Kavitidala. And I suppose that's maybe insert name here. Oh, and yeah, it looks like they're growing smaller until they become the form that we've seen before. And there's like these little fish flying off like scales from the dragon. So, we meet at last, Emma. I came from the entrance like you at er like you asked. Insert name here. Didn't I tell you this place has nothing, but also everything? I knew you'd be able to find the way. Where's Ray? Safe. He's back with his family now. That boy couldn't make it here yet, though he was almost ready. He did see that he was caged in walls of his own making, but he understood that intellectually er he only he understood that intellectually only, and could not break through. But he is the world, and the world is him. And this world, the truth is, it's er, it has no walls, whatsoever. It may seem simple for you, but har it's harder than you think, to free oneself, to free the world. And again, this is very, very spiritual, instead of the normal scientific stuff. What a great mind you have. You look absolutely delicious, he says. And then, why'd you come here? Er, and then, why did you come here? I came to search for the seven walls. I'll be waiting. We'll make a future we can accept without regrets. Go on, as far as you need. And she thinks to everyone, the future that I want. I, I want to liberate every cattle child in the world. I don't want to genocide the demons. And I can't let Norman carry all the burden alone. The time of the promise has come. I came to make a new promise. Man, look at this panel with her and insert name here and the dragon. So good. However, I don't even like, again, the fact that Norman's willing to just genocide all these innocent people kind of makes me think, screw saving Norman. It's hard to view him as savable anyway, because even if Emma's plan succeeds and he says, all right, no reason to genocide the demons anymore, the fact that he considered that, he plotted that out, and he was willing to go through with it, I don't know, it says so much about him being just irrevocably terrible. So... Yeah, and even the fact that he supposedly cares for these people, but he's willing to kill people that they said were their friends, that make them entirely unhappy if they died. And not only that, he's willing to use and manipulate Don and Gilda into bringing their own friends to be killed. Like, horrible. In com like, completely, um, completely unsavable, in my opinion. But, it is what it is. So let's continue on to 141, and it looks like we're not seeing her make the promise right away. We have black bar, so I'm assuming there's a flashback. 
So insert name here is in existence above all other demons. We'll make a new promise with insert name here, but what kind of new promise? How can we get or how can we get it through? I wonder if he'll even listen. After all, the demons want to keep eating humans, right? Sure, but take a look at this. Oh, we're getting more backstory? Because I was about to think maybe it is scientific, but maybe that he just ate so many genius brains and so many ascended sort of other demons that he became an existence that breaks the boundaries of what we humans understand. So maybe it is scientific, but he is so past scientific that it's basically magic. So it could be that. He could just be a, ge or a demon that ate the most brilliant at the Tafari so many times that they became some sort of transcended being, from all we know. Uh, and that's maybe how this all works. But either way, I see. The promise is about several things, says Ray. Humans will stop hunting demons. In return, demons won't hunt humans either. We'll divide the world between us and live apart. That was the give and take between humanity and the demon leaders. But there's one more thing that the humans and demons promise to one another. Oh, and we're having a flashback to the original promise. Oh, and we didn't get to see them. This can work. We can use this. They'll take it. And we'll be able to escape the world of demons. I've come to make a new promise, says Emma. Okay. I love this panel. Sure. What? So, what do you want? What? He just said yes. This is not what I expected at all. I mean, I'm not complaining. However... I, too, will want my reward. Okay. Reward. The compensation for your wish. Yes. And that looks like Duke of Elk. If you truly want to see your wish come true, you must not den- er, you must not deny him nothing? You mustn't deny him anything, I suppose, is proper grammar. But I don't know if it was said that way on purpose. So, I'll just keep that in mind. I don't know if that was a mistake or purposeful. Whatever it takes to achieve this promise. Alright. The days spread eternal as they dream of freedom. Oh, are we going to get some... The Promise of a Thousand Years Part 1? Are we going to get some, like, flashback arc to times of old? To the ancient times? Okay. The Promise of a Thousand Years Part 1? A little over a thousand years ago. Damn monsters. They were still more lying in ambush. Despair not. These were their last. Lord Rotry, when we defeat that group, this position will return to mankind. Man has Renegon out here. Uh, it's one more step in the path towards peace. We're close to victory. Get, the, er, get this over with, and let's return to our homes. Charge. Yes, sir. All right. And we see this battle against the demons. Man, I'm excited that we get to see the past here. We see all the corpses in the aftermath, both human and demon. And then this meeting of six human leaders, looks like. Once again, we have heavy losses. How much longer must, er, must we fight? Don't forget that we've downed one of their bases. It was a success. But what now? How shall we win? I wonder if there's a possibility of, of an armistice. And the others look at him. Peace talks. Surely the creatures are real like to agree. We would need to conceive an or of an offer they'd never refuse. Nonsense. We shall fight them to the bitter end. What if we offer them a hall of human beings? Julius... You think they'd respond to negotiations if the daily fare is assured? Is that what your hint, or is that what you hint at? Yes. We bring, or we bring the tribute in advance, as if offering seedlings for the growth of an orchard. We could bring criminals, slaves too. Then we find those they revere. That or again, cease this foolishness, Julius. This is most unlike thee. So it is. Such a path may be advantageous, but where's the justice in it? You have the right of it. Please forget what I said. I don't know what I was thinking. Your heart is just heavy for the soldiers who are sacrificing everything. But, 
If we deign to give them offerings, they might well ask for more and more. Yet another flaw in this plan. Some unknown fate bade us meet somehow in this land. We put aside all differences of kingdom or race, for here we fight together. Well and good an armistice might be, but our true goal is a victory for all humankind. Let us, disc er, let us discriminate not between country or rank. We shall hold fast for all the people. Victory is close at hand, er, victory is close, my friends. At long last, we may begin to see it close at hand. The war waged by so many of our ancestors will end with the, er, will end now with us. We shall seize for us a new world free of man-eaters. Right, just a bit more. We're almost there. It's finally close to complete, er, the mo er, this most important mission, with my invaluable friends, is finally close to completion. But then, I remembered that hope. Hope is something these monsters will destroy in the blink of an eye. And we see all of the humans dying. What manner of beast is he? It's a, it's a royal, one of their nobles. It's a royal family. Such power. This is Archduke Lewis. Oh, shit! And we see Lewis. He must be from the uh, Numa Numa family. Holy shit. Look at this version of Lewis. A most magnificent moon tonight, don't you agree? Well then, I see you are the last. Ah, it was at that moment I realized. I was fed up with it. I want to go home. I tire of this. All for the, er, all for the people? For the soldiers. I care not. All I know is, I am tired of this. It's almost over. When is that, then? It was all pretty words. Mirages. If I can see a way to win, doesn't that make it the best time right now? I can end all this. Now. I myself. Archduke Lewis, I surmise. I'd like to ask you to take me to Her Majesty. I wish to offer negotiations. The tragedy begins with the betrayal of his friends. Alright, and we see the original Rotary. Making the deal. <clears throat> this. This is cool. I like the way that certain characters look somewhat sort of like these, uh, like these characters that we've seen in the series. But, you know, it's whatever. One thing I, I hope they sort of like don't ruin the illusion that this is still set in like the real world you know it's just that in the real world the promise was made and then that's why the stories of demons and dragons and gods started fading out um so i hope they don't contradict that too much here but i find it interesting how like this dude kind of looks like lewis in a way kind of looks like Hugo in a way um Sort of looks like Emma in a way, even, and there was the other one that looked like Ray a bit. So, I find it interesting, and of course we know that Norman looks like the Rotary. Uh, but yeah, I'm just very, very interested to see how this goes, and to see what they do with it. I love that we're seeing this, though, that we're getting to see this backstory. But either way, one more chapter, and then I'm going to have to cut myself off for this week. Uh, but we see an injured soldier. I bring ill tidings. Archduke Lewis has appeared in the southwest forest front. The Rotary Central stronghold was annihilated. Commander Rotary himself may unfortunately be... I'm going after him. I'll go with you. Oi. Should he yet live, we're racing against time. Moreover, if the entire army was massacred, then we must reinforce... Er, then we must perforce retrieve the corpses at once. Because if they get eaten... Wait. All right. Oh, and now we see the Rotary is back. Julius, I'm glad, er, I'm glad to have you back. Are you hurt? My apologies for causing you worry. Yet I must, er, I must ask. There's something we need to discuss right now. Chapter 142, The Promise of a Thousand Years, Part 2. You want us to reconsider that proposal? Er, all present at the final negotiations are to offer them a hall of human beings and with that earn a peace agreement. Yet, we decided that this plan is hopeless. But now I know for a fact that only one offering is needed. There is a way to ensure they'll never again have to do any... Er, 
There's a way to ensure they'll never again have anything to do with us. Julius, surely that's much better than losing thousands, no, hundreds of soldiers, more, er, hundreds of thousands of more soldiers, and innocents. I, I've seen enough killing. One night, one night, or one night was all it took for total annihilation. On the other hand, if we make but a single offering, we can end all of this for good. But Julius, if we can't do that, we'll waste ourselves in this bloody quagmire forever. For the sake of humankind, we must perforce end this. No more idle talk and empty hopes. We ourselves can end the war, right now. It's certainly not a decision I make lightly, but this is a beneficial compromise. It's the price we must pay. I beg you, my friends, please, swallow this proposal. But what about the pain and suffering of those who were taken by them? This pain would go on and on, generation after generation, for all eternity. Not only would this peace be bought with the suffering of others, but the number of those who suffer for us will increase evermore. That's the consequence of this single offering. Am I not correct in my assessment of the implications? And they all grow quiet. I've also lost a great many soldiers. My father and brother were both eaten, and I'm far from the only one to lose family. The amount of comrades lost to their appetite is innumerable. And despite everything, didn't we all, didn't you too fight with us for the sake of the future? Even losing everything, even in the depths of despair, we never gave up. You too fought with us all the way. Stop, stop, you're wrong. Fantasies, pretty words. I'm fed up with all of this. Who cares about a bunch of strangers somewhere with the life of our friends at stake? I'm making the call right here. I'm... I'm... Then why do you look so full of anguish and pain, Julius? In your true heart, you don't want to sacrifice the strangers, do you? You've always cared more than anyone about the soldiers, the people. You're a model of honesty and kindness. That's why you feel so more, er, so more responsible than most leaders, and that's how you ended up in this quandary. But it wasn't, er, but wasn't it you yourself, Julius, more than anyone, who wanted peace for all of mankind, a victory without compromises? It's my fault that you've been shouldering this burden alone. I apologize. But for your own sake, I, know all of us, we cannot allow such a plan. And I wonder if this is sort of how things are going to work out where Emma's going to see this exact or Norman's going to see this exact same panel but it's going to be like Emma, Vincent, Ray and other people close to Norman trying to break through to him or it could even be Emma Ray um Don Gilda and I don't know who would replace the bearded guy in the back there I I was thinking um It'd be Vincent, Barbara, and Cicero. But instead, M Emma, Norman, Don, Gilda, and somebody else in the back there. All of us. We cannot allow such a plan. What you really need right now is rest. You're too tired. Let your body and mind recover in peace. Wrong. You're wrong. This peace treatise is the best option. I really wish you could come to see this. Because if not, if you don't agree to the terms of the plan... I see... Nothing I could do, er, nothing I could hope, nothing I can do could hope to change your values. Right. I'm sorry. I'm really so, so sorry. It's a real shame. An enemy attack, and the demons burst in behind him. Julius, you, you're a traitor. I've already come to a deal with their king. Not bad. Indeed, if I can seize full control of the food supply, my rule over my subjects will be strengthened significantly. I will buy into your peace. Please forgive me. There was no other choice. Right now you stand as obstacles in the way of a peace treaty. However much I dislike it, I have to make you the very first cattle humans. So again, if they're the very first cattle humans, it could explain why we have other humans who look similar to all of them, like... Ray or Lucas or uh, Hugo or Emma. May your bodies become the foundation for eternal peace. This is a good thing, he thinks. There was no other path but this, or there was no other answer but this path. Whatever the choice, somebody will have to be sacrificed, and somebody has to put an end to this horror. 
This will do it. The world will, the world will be saved. Humankind is saved, and he smiles. You wish to divide the world in two. Um, we see him making the deal with, um, we see him making the deal with insert name here. Sure, I'll grant your wish. However, I too want my reward. It's compensation for your wish, yes? You must not deny him anything. I've chosen what I want. First, Ivelk. From you I want the very best meat you'll grow through the ages. You want to make your er, you want to make your own humans, right? In farms. I want meat better than you, or the king er, I want meat better than you or the king will have. I consent, says Ivelk. Okay, next is Julius, from you. Just get this done, and all will be well. Everything will end, and I can go er, everything will end. I can go home. Ask away, ask anything, even my own life. You will be the gatekeeper, starting now. What? Your duty is conciliation. You'll be responsible to keep the peace between the two worlds. You'll be responsible to ensure that neither side ever breaks the promise you and the king made. We can live separately, and neither of us would be hunted, he thinks. This is a role that must be fulfilled from the human side, right? For safety reasons. Therefore, your family will stand as human representatives and take over this duty. Forever. You get it. You're now caught in the whirlwind of your destiny. Your descendants, too. You can't run away. Not from the friends you've discarded along the way. Not from your fate. You, too, will become a foundation for the peace. Sure, Emma. What do you wish? However, I, too, will want my reward. The reward... This was explained in Minerva's pen records, but in certain name here, he looks so pure, just like a child, really. He's transcended time and space, he's a higher dimensional being, he's the one who split reality between humans and demons. What's he thinking? What does he want? I have no idea. It feels like a, a capricious god. For a reward, I like important things best. Ambition, desire, craving... When you get something, it has to be something precious to the giver. Do you still want to proceed? What is your wish? Take a look at this, and she thinks back. There are three rules. One, a promise with insert name here can't be rewritten. Two, a promise made with insert name here can't be broken. Three, a reward desired by insert name here will absolutely not be denied. So if a promise can't be broken, then how does making a new one break the old one? But either way, I guess the new one could just override the old one rather than breaking it. The promise of a thousand years was to split the world. If we take that as a basis to build upon, our wish turns out to be quite simple. We, we can state it in two phrases. What I want is, says Emma, all right, that every cattle child is sent to the human world, and after this is done, that movement between the worlds closes completely. So, I guess the demons will be screwed to just devolve into nothing. Or, er, well, I guess they won't be screwed to devolve into nothingness if... Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. They won't be screwed to devolve into nothingness if, um... If, um, they use the blood of Musica. So they're gonna have to use Musica's ability. But... On the other hand, also, it's like, I feel like the drawback is that Emma's going to have to stay, or something. I will grant your wish. Who knows what will be, er, who knows what will be the price. Chapter 142, end. Okay, so, that's where we end for this week, I guess. Oh boy. So, I enjoyed it. I loved it. So, Emma's... Emma's plan to send all the cattle children to the human world. It's interesting. I wonder, like, if they're sending literally all of them, that's going to be this weird influx where people in the human world are going to be like, what in the hell is happening here? So I guess they're going to set, be sent to the human world. And we never really... This is weird, because there's so much stuff we never really got to see. We never really got to see the gateways that were in the plantations, and how the gateways actually worked. We never got to see what the Rotary's job actually really looked like. But we might see that stuff in the future. Who knows? Because the Rotary, even if this works out, the Rotary are still going to be around. The Royals are still going to be around. 
and he says he's going to accept the wish. So it's weird. It seems like if he accepts the wish, then Norman and all his group are just going to get whoosh sent on over to the human world and the conflict is over. So there has to be some sort of catch to keep the conflict going or this has to not work in some way in order to keep the conflict going because if this works then the conflict's over norman's not going to be able to kill him anymore and they're going to have no choice but to rely on musica um or musica's ability rather because i'm pretty sure the uh royals can just pass it on if they want their subjects to live too or else it's going to be a lonely life with just the royals left alone so yeah it's interesting. I liked seeing the flashback. I loved seeing more into the Demon Society um, and what Bayonne was thinking and everything. So yeah, I'm very excited to see what the future could potentially hold here and to talk about this series much more. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this week's uh, chapters, what you thought of my thoughts on them. Like I said, one more and we're caught up, essentially. Uh, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. If you want to link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us on Discord about this or anything else, it's free and open for anyone. And uh, if you want to help support the channel on Patreon and keep the channel going by supporting on Patreon, a link will be in the description. And patrons are going to get to vote on a new series that's going to be coming to the channel on Sundays. So yeah, that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.